welcome. And what a great day to cut the ribbon on this development that's been a long time in coming. I'm Gail Lattimore, the Executive Director at Codman Square in DC, and I'm pleased to be here with Mayor Walsh, our esteemed community members, our supportive funders and lenders, and other partners to celebrate the groundbreaking of Whittier Lyndhurst, Washington. We're standing uh, on the site of, uh, there are two of four sites that compose uh, Whittier Lyndhurst, Washington, or WLW as we know it. That's a 44 unit affordable housing development with a thousand square feet of ground floor commercial space. So the, one of the units is the Whittier School right next door, uh, one of the sites, this site. And along with the Whittier School that Cobbin Square NDC served as turnkey developer of back in the mid 80s when it was owned by the state, we now have developed 15 units of affordable housing in that school building. And we also built an additional 13 units of housing right here next to the Whittier School. The other sites for Whittier Lyndhurst, Washington are 4 6 Lyndhurst Street. Uh, it's right in the heart of Codman Square, where we, we reclaimed a problem building on Washington Street. And we substantially renovated it into eight units of affordable housing. And the last site is 472 Washington Street, the former Ted and Terry's building, that many, a store that many of you who've been in the neighborhood a long time might know. Uh, we built eight units of affordable housing, new construction with a thousand square feet of ground, a thousand square feet of ground floor commercial space at that location. I'm pleased to say that overall we achieved over 78 percent minority hiring and about 30 percent minority business enterprise utilization at this development. Thank you. And we're pleased to have continued our leadership in transit-oriented and sustainable development here at Whittier Lyndhurst, Washington. This project is located just two blocks from the relatively new Talbot Ave stop on the Fairmount Indigo Rail Line that CSNDC, along with a range of community partners, including Mayor Walsh when he was then State Rep Walsh, um, helped, and, and the Four Corners Action Coalition and the Talbot Norfolk Triangle Neighbors United helped fight for. So that stop was installed in 2012. It is also located, this development, in our Eco Innovation District, where we facilitated the energy retrofit of about 35 percent of the 525 housing units in, Talbot, in the Talbot Norfolk Triangle. And finally, this development is also cited in one of only two Slow Streets neighborhoods initiative that Mayor Walsh started where we're working with the Talbot Norfolk Triangle Neighbors United and our Eco Innovation District Director to calm traffic while also installing green infrastructure. And Whittier Lyndhurst, Washington, two of the sites, the one at 472 Washington Street and the one uh, at Whittier School right here, will be LEED Silver certified. And all of the sites will be Enterprise Green Community certified. So I want to thank Mayor, Mini Mayor, excuse me, oops, whoa, 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 whoa. I've been here too long. Sorry about that. I want to thank Mayor Walsh and his great staff, shame on me, at D&D and the department, the transportation department, the energy and open space and public works department, among others, for their leadership and support in getting us to this point. I now want to bring Mayor Walsh up to, to speak, and then we'll hear from DHCD, our Department of Housing and Community Development, as well as our construction lender and our equity lender at uh, investor at Bank of America and RBC Capital. And then we'll close out the program with a few words of thanks to our many community and funding partners, and then we'll cut the ribbon and have refreshments. So, Mayor Walsh. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Gail. Um, me and Menino just likes to have his hand in everything. <laughs> Even when he's not here, he's like, I'm in that, I'm doing that. Uh, but I, I want to thank Gail. I want to thank the Common Square uh, Neighborhood Council, uh, NDC, Na Neighborhood Development Council, uh, for their great work. Um, I want to thank Russell Holmes, who's here. State Representative Russell Holmes, you know, I had the honor of, of serving with Russell. Um, and, you know, when he became a state representative, uh, you know, we had a really strong partnership for Common Square. Um, not that the prior representatives weren't great, they were all great, 
But Russell brought a different different spirit to the job, and we worked really hard to make sure that Common Square got um, the things that were promised to them. Uh, so I want to thank you for, you for your leadership and what you've done. <laughs> and then a few years ago, uh, Common Square elected a new state representative, I mean a new city councilor, uh, and two, uh, with a drive and a passion um, to really get things done. And she's done an incredible job in her time in the Boston City Council. Uh, and I want to welcome Andrea Campbell with us today. Uh, I want to thank Sheila Dillon, who couldn't be with us this morning. I don't, but I want to thank Sheila for her work. Tommy Gannon, I see him in the back. Uh, Meg Regan and all of our partners that made this possible. Thank you so much for all that you've done. Uh, all the other partners, the financial partners, I know Bank of America's here. Thank you for, for as well. Um, th th this is a, these homes are a testament to, to this community's resilience. Uh, and the neighborhood resilience. All the neighborhood activists and neighborhood people here, thank you very much. You know, uh, I said this to Russell earlier. Uh, when I come back to my old district um, as a state rep when I was there, uh, you know, I think about all the work that was done. And I remember being on, on, on this street um, 20 years ago, walking with the neighborhood. And, and you know, there was some abandoned buildings, and old, an old, I think it was an old schoolhouse or whatever it was. And, and they were talking, you know, this is what we want to see here. We want to see housing. And we walked down New England Ave, and it was disgusting. It was filthy that people didn't clean the sidewalks and I was like how can we not clean the sidewalks and D&D &D owned a ton of land that the fences were broken down and we had car repair shops and and way back then uh, Gail had a plan and, and, and the neighborhood had a plan and we all had a plan and you know over 20 years later to open when I sit here and I look out and I just said to Russell you know sitting here driving up today seeing these beautiful homes here re really has shown the, the, the tenacity and the resilience of a neighborhood uh, fighting to make sure that it happens. So congratulations to the neighborhood uh, for this. You know, I'm not going to go too much into the speaking, but we were here a year ago for the groundbreaking, and, and what, what, this, what, this, what this creates, a 1,000 square feet of commercial space, um, cleans up the former gas station site, improve the sidewalks, and what's going to happen is not just here, but the sidewalks are going to be, it's kind of all around the neighborhood. We're going to be working to fix sidewalks. Uh, new community room, as you just walked into the community room. It's a beautiful new community room. And in, in this neighborhood, I mean, I know you have Common Square, you have the health center, but right here, you really don't have a community space. Uh, TNT has a space in their living room, but there's a space now in the neighborhood that, that people can have a meeting if they want to have a meeting without having to walk up to the square. And I know a bunch of different civic associations kind of take credit for or, or come together here. So there's really going to be an opportunity. Uh, preserve the old Lynnhurst site energy efficient, LEED certified, silver or higher. Um, I want to thank Gail for her work uh, from 2014 when I got elected on my transition team. She was part of that team. And we talked about creating more opportunities for housing. There's been a lot of talk, as you hear, about income inequality and about not pre preserving and not creating enough affordable housing. Well, I can say this. In Boston, we, uh, we launched a housing plan in, in 2014 to create 53,000 units of new housing by the year 2030. Almost 41,000 of those units either built in construction or in the pipeline. We are 120% ahead of the pace. Also included in that number is almost 8,000 units of moderate low-income housing, the highest in the history of the city of Boston. So we are building affordable housing. We are working together. I'm working with our elected officials. We're working with the state, the city. We're also going to continue to work with the federal government, try and get squeeze some, some money out of that rock if we can. We'll see if that happens. But we're going to try. So I just want to thank everyone here today. I want to thank the families and, and the people from the Whittier, Lynnhurst, Washington Street, Corridor. Uh, this is a model that we can use around the city of Boston. I am really excited, as you can tell, about today. So thank you for being here today. And I look forward to cutting the ribbon and doing a lot more. And I'm going to... And I want to, I want to bring up, I want to bring up, uh, we're gonna, our two elected officials are going to say a few words here, but I'm going to bring up the first one. I already kind of gave him an introduction. That's enough for him. Come up here, Representative Holmes. Good day, all. I'm Russell Holmes. I have the honor of and pleasure of representing part of Mattapan, Dorchester, Hyde Park, Rosendell, and JP. Cobb and Square, a significant part. And as the mayor mentioned, we went through Cobb and Square. What was coincidental is that after I, right after I got elected, there was redistricting. And TNT, the Neighborhood Association we're talking about, literally Marty and I went back and forth about trying to figure out TNT, where it's going to land. It's going to land in his district, it's going to land in mine as we were advocating uh, with Moran 
and I uh, ended up landing uh, still in Marty's old district, but in, in Hunt's old district. But it is a, a, a neighborhood I love to, to come in and to visit and to be a part of. And so uh, I'm going to just start where I left off this morning, and that is that we had a great day kicking off the free rides on the Fairmont line. And I have, there's no way I'm going to have this many people. <laughs> and even though the congressman is not here, we want to thank the congressman, Keolis, Darrell, all the folks who pulled that together this morning. It really is something that we should be proud of. We, uh, from the beginning, we know uh, just from this morning that we thought the count was smaller than what it, what it actually was. We did a count. And to Gail's credit and the team's credit, she has been persistent. MACDC and all saying, listen, as you build out this Fairmont line, we cannot have gentrification. We must have affordable housing all along the way. And I'll, although sometimes Gail and her team will think I'm listening, I am listening. <laughs> we are fighting for you. And, uh, and we work really at all levels, the federal, city, and state. There is really no division between us. You know, when Marty needed some legislation that we tried to do last year, but he was able to get it done this year just from some of his executive decisions around some of the affordable units along the line, we are fighting together. We want this neighborhood and the housing and the people who live here to not change as this neighborhood continues to become stronger and stronger. We don't want folks to see this as an opportunity to come in and really invade the neighborhood and move out folks as we've seen in some parts of the city. And we're going to continue to have this fight. So, Gail, congratulations to the entire team. Congratulations. And we are next, and when you talk about Sheila Dillon, we're next on Talbot Avenue. Yeah. We're going to try to make sure we get Roper's building done because of the fact that we need to continue to move forward. We can't just continue to look at what we have done, but we're looking at what's next. And there are a lot of things that are next for affordable housing in this district, and we're going to be here to fight for you. So thank you. And I'll bring up my great friend who, as Marty said, does not lead an introduction, but Councillor Campbell has been absolutely fantastic as a part of this team. And we're, you. you know, I saw the actual turf, and I can't help but to mention that that is something outstanding that our kids are going to be able to use. So our counselor, Councillor Campbell. Thank you. All right. uh, thank you, and, and, and thank you, Rep. Holmes, and thank you, Mayor Walsh, for the kind words. I said they're hired. You know, everywhere I go, I want to bring them. Um, so I, I won't speak long because it is actually quite cold out here. But, you know, I'm, the, I'm not new anymore. I'm in my second year of my first term. And I always say it is an honor and a privilege to represent the residents of District 4, um, the residents that are active, engaged in their community, and have been for decades, probably longer than I've been alive. And so I see the residents as a partner in this work. Um, I look forward to continuing to engage with them, to hear about their thoughts, their plans, their ideas. I think government works best when we actually take what we hear from the residents, turn it into policy, and turn it into action. We need to make sure they're at the table, that they're actually considered an effective partner in the ta at the table, but they're at the table. I want to thank Gail. I met Gail when I was a candidate. And we sat down and we had coffee when I was doing my listening tour. We talked a lot about affordable housing and what that meant for a community. We talked a lot about how you build that. We talked a lot about how you partner in the work, not only with government, but with the private sector to really meet the needs of a community. You are a visionary, and I appreciate you, and I appreciate the hard work that you do, so thank you. And, and lastly, I'll say this. It is really important to me to change the narrative of a community. District 4 is not about just violence, poverty, income inequality. It is about active civic associations, residents coming together to push for farmers markets to bring healthy food. It is about youth getting engaged in their community and showing up and doing the work. It is about building affordable housing. It is about building together. It is about, I'm looking around, I see Mike. It's about climate change and putting these issues at the forefront of things that we care about. It's about a lot of different things and frankly that's what my residents want us to be talking about. That's frankly what they want the media to be covering about our neighborhoods. We are doing the work and so I will keep shining a light on that work but thank you for this. Thank you for changing our community for the better and thank you for your hard work and thank you for allowing me to be a partner in the work. Thank, thank you. you. Um, Councillor Campbell doesn't remember that we actually met when she was um, doing some work through the Black Bar Association, as I recall, was a volunteer, and she brought volunteers in to do community cleanup and some other work. So it was even before you became a candidate, but we're thrilled to have you. Yes, thank you. And I want to do a quick, uh, really do a segue on what the council was talking about and kind of switch up on the agenda a bit, because the council talked about residents and how important they are, and all of this is about 
residents who live in this community. So on the agenda is uh, one of the residents who is living here. Is she here? At no, she's she's not, she's not here yet. But Isabel is. You want to come up and introduce her quickly, and then we can um, bring her on to say a few words. We have one of the residents here to speak. Good morning, and thank you all for being here. I just want to introduce Isabel Diaz, who is one of the residents here at this property, and she's just going to share briefly um, her sentiments about living over here in the WLW property. You got help. Well, hi, everybody. Good morning. Well, all I have to say is I've been living in the building. I was living since 2000, and I am so blessed because now I have this new development. And all I can say, thank you, Jesus, and I love you here. Okay, I feel so blessed, it's, not even, it's amazing. I won't move for nothing. Thank you, everybody. And now we will continue. Thank you, Isabel. Uh, Isabel is very active in the community, very short spoken, but very active. We want to, and I want to recognize a couple of people soon, but right now we're going to keep on with the program and I want to bring up uh, Susan Terry, who is the Assistant Undersecretary of the Department of Housing and Community Development, a key funder in this project. Thank you. Good morning. I'm very proud to be able to be here today representing Undersecretary Cornegay and the Baker Polito Administration. As you know, one of the key components of our administration's priorities is the preservation and production of affordable housing. Projects like this do not happen overnight, and they don't happen without the support of strong partnerships between the city, Mayor Walsh, and the state, and between our quasi-public agencies, Mass Housing, CDAC, and Mass Housing Partnership. This project in particular represents the commitment and hard work of a lot of great people and neighborhood partners. I'm really happy to be able to introduce one of those partners. Clark Ziegler at Mass Housing Partnership. MHP were key, key players in bringing this project to fruition. Clark, thank you for the work of you and your team at MHP. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I, I think I, this is our eighth project uh, we financed for, for uh, Cobb and Square, and uh, we hope to do many more. And I think I can speak for all the state agencies involved in this development, saying that it is an absolute pleasure working with Gail um, and her team you guys are, in, are consummate professionals, and honestly, you know, throughout the Commonwealth, nobody does it as well as you. It's, it's fantastic. You do, you do a great job. And I also, uh, it has to be mentioned, uh, there's a little bit of history here. If you, it, behind you, is the, as one part of this development is the Whittier School. That actually is sort of an orphan public housing development that was uh, uh, owned and controlled by the state, not by the Boston Housing Authority. Uh, and was sort of in limbo when we were brought in 11 years ago by DHCD to look at the physical and financial condition of the property, figure out the best disposition, and that resulted in the process that led to the assembly, assembly of this, this larger parcel, a larger development, the rehab of that property. And I think it's important for folks to remember, um, not only is this a great development from in, in terms of knitting this neighborhood stronger, but it's also taking a public housing asset. We have tens of thousands of units of state-funded public housing in this Commonwealth that need an additional investment, that need to be modernized, that need to be better, better integrated in their communities. And this project is really showing the way to get that done. It's a major asset. It's part of, it's part of the way we, we, you know, we house folks in this Commonwealth. And this project is a, is a wonderful example. And we want to congratulate uh, the entire team, and uh, wish you the best. Thanks. Thanks, Clark. We have two more speakers uh, before we cut the ribbon, and the next uh, speaker is Hall Chamberlain, who is the market president for Bank of America Merrill Lynch. I, uh, I, I like to be as brief as Isabel, but I got to get a couple points across. You did a great job, Isabel, but. Uh, you know, on behalf of all my colleagues at Bank of America, I'm honored to be here to sponsor the company uh, today. And, and really, I'd like to congratulate Gail Lattimore 
not only on this project, but we've uh, partnered dating back to our work together all the way back to the uh, financial center branch that we did in the 1980s that ended up uh, bit going into the Lithgow building. So uh, thank mm -hmm. you for your partnership through the years. And also, you know, I'd like to express our admiration for your commitment to creating and preserving housing that fosters a diverse and sustainable Boston. And this is a fantastic uh, thing to look at here today. You know, Bank of America, our purpose from our CEO down is to really make people's financial lives better. And we know there's only, that we're only going to be successful and, and part of a community if we can help that community grow healthier. And today we feel like this is another, uh, another point of evidence that we're doing that. This project's more than a roof over people's heads. I think, as Mayor Walsh said, uh, you have a community aspect to this. We're a gathering place where people can uh, feel safe. Uh, it can be a vibrant part of the community and really a gathering spot for all. Uh, like all of you today uh, that are here, we want Boston neighborhoods to be safe. We want them to be growing and thriving with equal opportunity for all. And we're honored to play a small part in this development uh, here today. I'd like to first recognize uh, a couple of my colleagues in the back, Liz Gruber and uh, Robert Terrell, who really ran point for us on this project. And they're part of our uh, community banking team that uh, provide over $460 million in debt and equity investments to support affordable housing developments in Massachusetts in 2015 and 2016. So we've made those investments. We're committed to making more, working with Mayor Walsh and his administration, uh, Governor Baker. We really want to go neighborhood by neighborhood, and we consider it a privilege to do uh, the business we do in this state and to help economies grow stronger. So thank you, Gail. Thanks for all the work, Mayor Walsh and uh, good luck with the project. Thank you, Michal. And last but not least is Tom Maxwell. Tom Maxwell is the Regional Director of Northeast for RBC Capital, our equity investor in the project. Thank you, Gail. Uh, yes, my name's Tom Maxwell. I'm uh, an affordable housing finance geek. Um, <laughs> And we, I'm with uh, RBC Capital Markets. We provided the tax credit equity for the project. Most of you are saying, well, what the heck is he talking about? And that's how my wife uh, reacts to it as well, so I won't go on too much about that. Uh, uh, RBC has provided about $11 million in this project. Um, we're very proud of that. We've done about $400 million across the state of Massachusetts and about $6 billion in the U.S. as a whole. So we're very proud of that, but what I, frankly, am most proud of is being part of the, there is a community of affordable housing finance geeks in the Boston area and Eastern Massachusetts, and I'm very proud to be a part of that community. I've been part of it for 35 years or so, uh, working with you know lenders, investors, developers, lawyers, lawyers, lawyers. <laughs> uh, there's plenty of that going on. Um, uh, th this was a really, you know, f fantastically interesting project from a finance point of view. I think it was six buildings, four sites, three contractors, and money from the city, from the state, uh, from the feds, and private money. So it was just an incredibly complex and therefore kind of fun project to work on. Um, I know it's cold. I'm freezing. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And yes. It is cold, but I do have to take time to thank uh, the numerous partners. So bear with me, and I'm going to go through them all, um, and then we'll cut the ribbon. So on the community side, um, Paul Malcolmus, Tiffany Coljo, Col Gail Granville, and members of the Talbot Norfolk Triangle Neighborhood uh, Neighborhoods United, the Cynthia and Bill Lesh uh, of the Cobbin Square Neighborhood Council, Marvin Martin and Mella Bush of the Greater Four Corners Action Coalition for their leadership on the Fairmount Indigo Line, and of course the D&D staff, Sheila Dillon was mentioned, Teresa Gallagher, Tom Gannon, Jay Lee, and on the DHCD side we heard from Susan Terry, but also want to shout out to Crystal Cornegay, Carrie Knutson, Paul McPartland, Roberta Rubin, and Bradley Day. And of course, we heard from RBC Capital, Tom Maxwell, and later on, we'll be meeting with Craig Wagner of RBC Capital. And of course, from Bank of America, we heard from Michal Chamberlain and Liz Gruber, who's been like our, you know, guide forever at Bank of America, and Rob Terrell, who I was calling at 3 o'clock last New Year's Eve, are we closing on this deal? Come on, Robin, hurry up. 
Okay, so I finally got to meet him today, and he was a real, it was all via phone, but it was a lot of back and forth. And of course, NeighborWorks America, we have Michael Williams here, uh, just a real solid uh, support for us, and they provided capital also. LISC, the Local Initiative Support Corporation, Bob Van Meter and Mike Davis. CDAC, Roger Her Herzog, Sarah Barkin, who is here, who actually helped acquire 472 watching the street, the Ted and Terry site, way back when she worked for Godman Square in DC. The Life Initiative, Mike Gondek is here. Uh, thank you, Mike. Ma Mass Development, Marty Jones. Uh, Mass Housing, uh, Tim Sullivan is here. I saw him earlier, thank you. Um, Mass Housing Partnership, we heard from Clark Ziegler, but Judy Jacobson. David Rockwell and Dennis Ledger of MHP were also very involved in this project. Enterprise Community Partners, Katie Swinson, Alma Ballin and Rosen, Nella Young uh, were also key to this. Our staff at Codman Square in DC, our former real estate development director who got this going, Mark Dinerberg is back there. Thank you. <laughs> I, 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 I do not see our former uh, project manager, Mormar Hermanstein, but Beth O'Donnell, who is our relatively new real estate uh, director, is here. Thank you, Beth, so much. Dave Queeley is our Eco Innovation District Director. Marilyn Foreman, who came up to introduce Isabel, is our lead organizer. And uh, of course, we have a range of other folks here, including Drew Vernalia, our asset manager, and Sonia DeRose, who helped organize this. On the Wynn residential side, a few more thanks. Paula Andrews, I see, is here on Wynn Residential. They are key to managing all of our properties. Jim Juisty is here. Brian Keene and Hector Cruz and all the maintenance staff have been just tremendous in working with us. Our auditors are here, Ken Lund, as well as Colleen DeFonso, who are here. Um, they keep us all on track financially. And our attorneys um, from Goosen and Stewards, Amy McGrath and Joe Sheridan, and of course, Joe Feaster from McKinsey Law. So thank you. And a couple of other quick thanks. Just a couple of other quick thanks, and we're almost done. On the Clerk of the Works side, great job by Janie Construction, Greg Janey, Bob White, and Al Peters. Our real estate development consultant, Henry Joseph, I don't think is here, but um, he will be here. And I do see Matt Hensey back there, who used to be a, uh, with Cobb Square in DC, who was a part of this project as well. Our architects uh, from ICON, Steve Hyken and Mike Gardnier. Our, I don't know, I, saw, I think I saw Steve here. And from um, Elton Hampton Architects, Nick Elton and David Farron. And then on the contractor side, we had, as, uh, as Tom mentioned, three general contractors on this development. Uh, Bill Glazer from Landmark, as well as Ben, Chris, and Paul, who were instrumental on a day-to-day -day basis. NEI, uh, Joe Rettman, Mark Macelli, Brian Porter, and Dan Pope, and Northern, Andrew Shaba, Phil Salvucci, and Chris Yoakum. And of course, on the mayor's office side, the advanced staff, um, Emma, and Carrie, thank you very much for your help. And we mentioned the elected officials who are here today, Andrea Campbell. In addition to that, we got support from Ayanna Presley, Linda Dorsina Fori, our senator, and of course, um, Russell Holmes, who we love dearly, uh, and our, our congressmen and, and senators. So thank you very much. And I'm sorry if I missed anyone, but we really appreciate everyone. So now we're going to cut the ribbon.